Welcome back. My next guest is the CEO of the ASX listed global health company. His name is Matthew Cherian and let's just see if the potential profits of the company are going to be on steroids going forward. Well I guess it's a bit of a, a negative connotation but it's, it's, it's positive on another side. Yes. Uh, Matthew thanks for joining us on the show. Thanks for having me Peter. Tell me about global health. Okay so uh, global health is a company that designs, builds and licenses software applications for the health industry. Okay. We first got involved in healthcare about in the 90s, in the early 90s, mm. building applications for hospitals yeah. and built a bit of a niche, uh, doing the back office of hospitals, you know, managing patient flows, theaters, yeah. beds and all that sort of stuff. And uh, in the last 10 years, with the advent of the, inf of the internet, we uh, felt quite excited about the opportunities for for um, you know radical innovation mm. and so started moving into adjacent markets you know systems for clinicians systems for connectivity systems for consumers now yeah. and so today we have about a thousand sites across Australia a thousand sites that have at least one of our applications mm. and these range from small little solo physiotherapists allied health people through to GPs specialist clinics um, rehab hospitals, day surgeries, and even large 150-bed complex hospitals. So it's quite a range. So give us a, an idea of what the software achieves. So we don't really have a single application. What we've done from the start was recognize that the internet's really about applications working well together. So what we really have is a whole portfolio of applications, and they cover almost the entire spectrum of health. So we have applications that run the business of health. Yeah. We have applications within the Mastercare brand. Uh, and within the Mastercare brand, we also have applications that support clinicians that have to provide services um, in, in a very unique way, by yeah. the way. And then we have a connectivity brand, which is because the healthcare is really uh, involves a, a whole bunch of different providers that yeah. need to you know, send documents, orders, results, and all that mm. sort of stuff. And, uh, and we have a consumer brand called Lifeguard. So there's about four brands, but probably about 15 to 16 different little applications mm. that work really well together and work with other people's products as well. So does it mean that if I want, I'm a GP or a clinician, what I get effective is like, is not like a dashboard of the important things I have to do on a very regular basis to make this business work, to link up with suppliers and link up even with the government and things like that in terms of, you know, Medicare payments and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, it does all of that. Mm -hmm. But the real, uh, the real differentiator for us is the fact that we've built our systems around the consumer being the center of the universe. Yeah. So the days in the past with software, people built systems that ran hospitals, that tried to do everything for everyone, whether you're an oncologist or a pediatrician, whereas we've built a system that says, let's put the patient in the center. He's going to visit a whole bunch of different uh, clinicians across his single episode and across his lifetime. And what we really want to do is connect all the guys that are involved in looking after the patient mm. and uh, empower the patient or the consumer to really take control of his health. Okay. How big is your market? Well, the global part of the name has two connotations. The first part of it is the fact that we always take a holistic view of health. Yeah. So we don't see health as systems for doctors or insurers or, or pathology. We see systems that have to connect the whole sector. Yeah. So um, the second part of the global aspect of our name is the fact that uh, medicine, healthcare is largely universal across the world. We like the fact that we're in the largest uh, single industry in the world, I think. Healthcare affects every citizen of every country. In a fast-growing sector. In a fast-growing sector. Yep. So uh, uh, the market is, the global market is huge. The Australian market is, well, $180 billion spent on health and very little of it spent on, spent on software. Okay. And, and how um, uh, applicable is your software in a different national setting? As in a different jurisdiction? Yeah. Okay. So... Again, like I said earlier, the architecture we set out to achieve was one where you have lots of apps working together. I think uh, if you look at our phones, our typical phones, we've got just a lot of apps that do yeah. things well, mm -hmm. and uh, they do the stuff that's universal in one app. It defines our life in many ways. That's right. It? And and if you have a billing system that's different in, in China or, or Vietnam or or North America, uh, well, that's an add-on. That's the way you know the the stars of the internet like that that have 
that have uh, succeeded, uh, they have a very open architecture that allow people to plug and play. Okay, so what are the important milestones you have to get to yeah. to, to ramp up the growth? Yeah. So um, over the last uh, 12 months, 18 months in particular, we've really set out to say let's, we need to access the global marketplace. Yeah. We need to access the global marketplace to improve our accessibility to supply so we can get the best suppliers across the world that provide the best quality and the best value. So we moved all our infrastructure to the cloud in order to be able to manage our cost mm. and manage the quality and manage our ability to scale. So um, of the 10 key products that we have, probably 50% of them are now being transformed to the cloud. So that can reach out to the global marketplace. Mm. So we we have to now slowly migrate and we are in the process of migrating uh, function by function across different apps that sit on the cloud. Mm -hmm. And in a, in a way that allows us to, to um, deploy this in, in any jurisdiction mm -hmm. and in any setting through integration of, of uh, apps. Okay, to bring it back to Australia, how many uh, how many businesses, uh, this you use business because there are people in the business, yep. businesses, yep. is your potential market? Yep. Are we talking, you know, 100,000 yep. of which you've currently got 2,000? Yep. Give us an idea of, the, of that, that market share. So if you look at, uh, at the stats that I've seen, uh, there are effectively 100,000 uh, uh, businesses involved in healthcare. Healthcare yep. is very fragmented. Yep. Uh, most of the specialists, the, the, the allied health workers especially, are are solo independent SMEs. Mm -hmm. yep. So the estimates have been up to 100,000. Yeah. Um, but the high value ones are the acute sector, the hospitals. Yeah. And there's probably uh, only 1,300 of those, mm -hmm. uh, which is represented by possibly uh, 200 customers. So the high value ones tend to be um, a small market. Mm -hmm. And at the lower end, at the base, at the, at the coal face of healthcare, there's lots. Mm -hmm. well, if you include pathology, radiology, pharmacies, yeah. and everybody else. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So how many have you got now, and how many rivals do you have in the market competing with right. you? So we have, we have a, a footprint that's across a thousand, which is fine. Yeah. Uh, one hundredth of the market this time. One hundredth of the yeah. market. Um, and, and, and they vary in our penetration. It may be one of our little small products, or it may be one of our, you know, it'd be someone paying us $500 a year, it could be someone paying us uh, $250,000 a year, yeah. depending on how much of our applications yeah. they use. Uh, competition's an interesting one. Well, I'm not aware of any company that's got this holistic view of health. Mm -hmm. So if we're bidding for a hospital, we tend to have one set of competitors. Mm -hmm. If we're bidding for chronic disease, mental health applications, we have a different set of competitors. If we're bidding for connectivity, you know, claims and, and uh, secure messaging, we have a different set of competitors. So uh, competition is great. It sort of fosters innovation and, and it's small companies like us mm -hmm. that can innovate. Mm -hmm. uh, so we fully expect a lot of competition, but our architecture uh, lends itself to us working with, the, with our competitors mm -hmm. rather than working against Are us. Are you profitable now? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. We, uh, and so is, is there something out there to think that there's some nice blue sky on the way? Well, the blue sky, uh, in the next 18 months, we pretty much uh, focused on, on our existing portfolio of products uh, just continuing to grow. Mm. Uh, but as we execute our cloud strategy, that opens up the blue sky. Right. Uh, and as we execute our consumer engagement strategy, that's the other potential blue sky. So we've got two goals. One is to one is to move from a B2B business to a B2C business, yeah. so we are engaging consumers That's in healthcare. Yeah. And the other one is to uh, get our applications on the cloud so we can drop the price point